Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Ellie, the Learning and Skills Intern, and I'm here with Imogen, our Biodiversity Officer. And today we're going to be talking a bit about water and pollution. In our previous video, we made a mini wetland and we talked about the importance of the habitat. So we're sort of going to carry on from there and talk about pollution in water and why it's important that we avoid that too. So we're Imogen, what is pollution? Um, so pollution is any kind of thing that enters the environment that has toxic or a harmful effect on the natural environment. So it could be chemical, it could be from pesticides or fertilizers. It could also come from sort of microplastics, little tiny plastics that can then be uh, ingested by wildlife in the environment. So it might be things that we actually think are not that dangerous but actually can be very damaging to water. Yeah, things that might seem quite harmless in the home like washing up liquid or laundry detergent may have a, an effect on the natural environment. So in terms of if we did have a water body with pollution in it, what would we do to sort of stop that or change it? Well, but once the pollution is in the water source, it's quite hard to get rid of it. It's very expensive to treat water. So a lot of our drinking water comes from natural sources and that all has to be treated. So the more pollution that is in it, the more expensive that becomes for water companies to treat it. But there are natural things that we can do to stop pollution from getting into the water. So in, in our daily lives, is there anything we could do to sort of reduce this risk of polluting water? Is there anything we can, can we change yeah. our lifestyle or our habits? Um, yeah, we can be more careful about uh, what things we tip down the drain, so what sort of chemicals we're using in our garden, if we're using slightly more eco-friendly chemicals or more eco-friendly laundry detergents or washing up liquids. You can filter out some pollutants with plants, so you can kind of grow more wildflowers or trees or restoring natural environments acts as quite a big filter for, for so, nutrients. So something like a reed bed you could have? Yeah, so a reed bed is a really good example of a natural system which filters out pollutants in the environment and stops them. And I guess just changing like your product list, like you say, maybe like eco-friendly clean products? Yeah, clean products. anything that has less strong chemicals in it. So the stronger the chemicals are in the product, that has to go somewhere, it runs off into the water course. In terms of the effects of pollution, what, what will it tend to do to things living in the water, different plants, different species? So depending on how much pollutant there is in the water or how concentrated it is in the environment, it, if it's a major event, it could immediately kill all wildlife or all plant life. If it's a sort of smaller event, but building up over time, then that could have an impact on the sort of reproduction of plants and animals so it may not be necessarily visible but over time it's having a negative effect and it also makes our water courses uh, more dirty and more um, harder to clean up. Say if you're out walking is there is there any way that you could identify that a water body was polluted is there any sort of signs? So some of the key signs of a polluted water course are if it's very smelly and stagnant if the water's not really running clear if there's very cloudy water. So in terms of the forest have, are we doing anything to manage our waterways? or ponds are. Yeah, so we are we're doing some monitoring, we're carrying out assessments of the state of our rivers and the state of our ponds. In terms of management we've created a few ponds. Sometimes ponds can act as sort of filters for sediments and nutrients getting into the water courses. And also we're creating ponds and also making the rivers that we do have better by adding more habitat to them. So in order to show you the effects of pollution, we've come up with a simple experiment that you can do at home. So I just quickly want to mention some points about health and safety, guys. If you are going out to collect water, please make sure that you are with an adult and you are doing it safely. Don't go and collect water on your own from ponds and make sure you're asking permission if the ponds don't belong to you. In terms of putting chemicals into your jars, you also need to be doing it with an adult nearby. Also, if you are going to do this experiment, guys, we've also got a PDF, which is linked below. It's a worksheet where you can write your results for your own experiment, and it's a good record of what you've done. So for this experiment, you will need a couple of jars. I've got four, three for the pollutants and one for the control jar. And what you need to do is just visit a local water body near you. So it could be a pond, it could be a little stream and collect a jug full of water with some pond weed or algae living in it. You then want to take it home and you want to separate your water that you've collected into the four jars. So you'll have three for pollutants and one for your control. So this is currently my control jar. And what I've also done is I've stuck what it is on that so I know which jar it is. And as you can see, that jar got a nice amount of pond weed growing in it and a good amount of water. In terms of control, you just want to make sure all your water is the same amount in each jar. So for our three pollutants, we have chosen vinegar, washing detergent 
and fertiliser. And what I've done is I've put a teaspoon of each pollutant in each jar. So when you're doing this experiment, guys, it's important to keep the controls the same. So you want the same amount of water and the same amount of pollutant. So you sort of can measure it at the same level. And then what I've done is I've just left the lids open slightly so they get a bit of oxygen. And you want to keep your jars in the same environment. So I've been keeping mine in my conservatory. And it's quite good to look at them every day and take pictures as well because then you can sort of see the changes. So Imogen, why is this sort of a good experiment to do in terms um, Pollution. Well, this is very, it very clearly shows how having a certain concentrate of pollutant affects the water over a few weeks. So this is a vinegar. Vinegar is quite acidic and you can see that it's killed off all the plant life and it's changed the colour of the water to be like a murky colour. So this is fertiliser. Fertilisers typically have high numbers of chemicals in called phosphates and nitrates. When you have high levels of nitrates and phosphates in the environment, um, that pushes out some of the less competitive plants. So you end up with a less diversity of plant life life and you can see that in that concentration it has actually killed off quite a bit of the pond weed as well and that's changed it to be a more of a murky brown that some of the plants in this one have have died and gone to the bottom this final one is washing detergent and you can see that this has made the water quite frothy again all the plant life seems to have died and gone to the bottom so it just goes to show that even stuff that seems quite innocuous around the house can have harmful effects when it builds up so Imogen I'm just noticing because I'm looking at our control one which obviously we haven't done anything to the difference is really quite dramatic you sort of look yeah. at the difference between them even the colour yeah. you know the pond weed is a lot greener there's a lot more of it and it really just to show over a small period of time how much pollutants can affect the water. Okay, yeah. If you do try this at home, share your results with us on social media and let us know how you've got on. Thanks for watching, guys. We hope you enjoyed that. See you soon. Bye. Bye.